In this example, we have a U-tube manometer, but the arms of the U-tube manometer have different areas. So this area over here is A1, a little bit smaller than the area over here, A2. And we're given that the fluids in the manometer include uh, water, which is this light gray, and mercury, which is the dark gray. And we're told initially the geometry looks like what we have on the left. Uh, we have the same pressure in the uh, open to both tubes on the left and the right. And then on the right hand side what happens is the pressure on the left tube goes up a little bit, so up by an amount delta P, and the height of the mercury, uh, the height in the right arm, goes up by a distance little h. And we're asked ultimately to determine the deflection h, that little h over here, in terms of the areas of the arms, the delta P, gravity, and the density of water. And then we're also asked to find the sensitivity of the manometer. So the sensitivity of a manometer is S here. It's defined as how much the height changes, dh, so just how much this height changes as you make a small change in the pressure, delta P. So generally, you'd want a larger sensitivity. So any small pressures show up as large changes in heights. Right? You want a large delta or dh if you have a small dp, B, d delta p. Um, you want that ratio to be large so that you get big, uh, big changes in height for small pressure changes. So let's go ahead and analyze this manometer. The first thing we'll do is just look at the case on the left. Uh, look at that situation and see how various quantities are related. So let's put some dimensions on this. So on the left arm, we're going to call this distance L1, just from the free surface down to the bottom. We'll call this distance L2. And we'll call this distance L3. We don't know what any of those heights are, but we'll figure it out in just a little bit. And let's call this point 1 right on that left surface and point 2 on the right surface. We do know those pressures there at 1 and 2. Those are both just equal to P because they're open to the atmosphere. So let's do a manometer balance on this uh, system on the left-hand side. So we'll start, uh, we'll say that we want to find the pressure at 2, starting with the pressure at 1. So the pressure at 1 will add in the weight of the water. Remember the water is the light colored gray material here. So we're going to add in the weight of the water over a distance L1. That gets us to that point. Then we can come over horizontally to here and then go up this distance to that point there. So we're going to subtract out the weight of the water over a distance L2 because we're moving upward. And then lastly, we'll go upward to point 2 there through the mercury. So we're going to subtract out the weight of the mercury over distance uh, L3. And one other note I'll make here is we can rewrite the density of mercury as the specific gravity of mercury times the density of water. That way we can get everything in terms of the density of water. All right, so let's simplify what we had just written down there. So P1 and P2 are both equal to P. Right? And that's because they're both open to the same pressure. So those will cancel one another out. And you'll see that uh, if I rewrite the density of mercury in terms of that specific gravity and the density of water, then the densities of water cancel out, the gravities cancel out. And then what we'll be left with is uh, L1 minus L2 is equal to the specific gravity of the mercury times L3. Okay, what I've done is I've just kept the L1 and L2 uh, to one side and then I moved this term to the other side of the equation. So that's what we get from the initial situation. Now let's consider the situation on the right hand side. The geometry has changed a little bit. So what we'll say is if you look here when we add the additional pressure this left hand side has gone down a little bit. So if I sketch out here, it's gone down some distance, right? So our initial height was L1, but now we've dropped down, let's just call it some distance delta L1. Okay, so we've, we've dropped down a little bit from where we started. And let me put my point one here again. So that's gone down, and because that's gone down, the arm on the right-hand side has gone up a little bit. We have to conserve 
uh, volume here, right? Um, the water and mercury are considered incompressible because they're liquids. So if I move down over here, I've got to move upwards here. And in fact, you can sort of see that again if I da draw this dashed line over, you'll see that it goes up some distance. So this distance is still L2, but let's call that height that it goes up H. It's going to be different from L1, delta L1. The H goes up. Um, they're different because they're different areas. Remember, this is this cross-sectional area here is A1, while this is A. A2. And the reason I used H here is because they told us that this surface moves up a distance H. So if the if if this moves up by a distance H, then it ha this has to move up by a distance H as well. And then this height of the mercury is still going to be L3 because that's what it was over here, and uh, it's incompressible, so it's not changing its volume or anything like that. And then we have point two on the free surface here. Okay, so it's important to understand how the geometry changes. This goes down by a distance, we're gonna call it delta L1. And then the right-hand side goes up by a distance H. And so that helps us figure out the geometry. We'll do the manometer problem on the right-hand side now. So pressure at two, it's gonna be the pressure at one, the pressure we start with over here. And then we'll move down to this point, down at the bottom. So that'll be a distance of L1 minus delta L1. So we're going to add in the weight of the water over that distance of L1 minus delta L1. And we'll move over to the right hand side and we'll move up to this point. So that distance will be, so now we're going to subtract out the weight of the water. And that distance we're moving upward is L2 plus H because we're now moving upwards the original L2 distance plus now it's gone upwards a little bit more called H. And then we're going to subtract out the weight of the mercury and that'll just be a distance L3 because we're going from this point to that point which is still L3. Okay and we can still rewrite the density of mercury as the specific gravity of mercury times the density of water. So we'll make use of that. Uh, as far as the pressures, so we can see that P2 is still just P, but P1 now is P plus delta P because we've increased the pressure just a little bit. It's that little bit of pressure that causes the geometry to change a bit. So now you can see that we can cancel out those pressures and let me uh, let me just simplify this expression here. We'll get, I'll bring this pressure term over to the left hand side so we'll get a minus delta P, and then I'm going to divide everything through by the density of water and gravity, because you'll see that's the density of water times gravity is in each one of these terms. And then what we're left with on the right-hand side is L1 minus delta L1 minus L2 minus H, and then minus uh, the specific gravity of mercury times L3. I think I've done all my uh, algebra correctly there. All right, so, so far so good. Well, if you look at this term right here, the specific gravity of mercury times L3, that's the same thing here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna substitute in the L1 minus L2 down into this expression. So L1 minus delta L1 minus L2 minus H minus L1 plus L2. So what I've done is I've just, let me highlight it. So I've taken this term and substituted in that expression. And I carried through the minus sign. Here's a minus here, so that's why I get a minus L1. And then the minus times the minus L2 gives me a positive L2. Now if you look at that for a moment, you'll see that some terms cancel out. The L1 cancels out with that L1. This L2 cancels out with that L2. And we're left with minus delta L1 minus H. We've got negatives in you know here, here, and here, so let's just divide through to get delta P is equal to delta P over uh, rho times G is equal to delta L1 plus H. Okay, so so far so good. Uh, if you look back at our problem statement, we're asked to find the deflection H in terms of A1, A2, delta P, G, and rho, 
if you look here, we've got a delta L1. So we don't need, we don't know what that value is. So we still need to figure out how delta L1 is related to everything else. And the way we can do that is to, again, go back to the geometry and realize that if this goes down a distance delta L1 and this goes up a distance H, what, what's happening here is we're conserving volume. Let me, let me try to highlight the volume that I'm talking about. So here's the volume that I've gone down on the left-hand side, and that volume has to be the same as this volume over on the right-hand side. Hopefully that shows up well for you. Right, so those volumes have to be equal because the material is not compressible. So let's write that down. So equating volumes. The volume on the left-hand side will be A1 times delta L1, and the volume on the right-hand side will be A2 times H. So that delta L1 is A2 over A1 times H. So I can substitute that in right there. So let's go ahead and do that and rewrite everything. And we get down to that expression. Okay, so now we're pretty close to the final result. What we ultimately wanted was H in terms of all these other things. So let's just write H. So here H will be 1 over A2 over A1 plus 1 times delta P over density of water times G. And that's our result. So that's how far the deflection will be on the right-hand side as we have a small change in pressure. Okay, so that's, that's part A of our problem. We were trying to find the height in terms of these other quantities. So just a reminder of how we did that. What we did is we analyzed the manometer problem initially. So that, that was this expression. We just analyzed the manometer at the be beginning case. Then we analyze the manometer after we apply the pressure. So the geometry changes a little bit, right? The geometry changed a little bit. And so we did that manometer here. And then the last thing we did is we just used a little bit more of the geometry, recognizing that this volume that goes down here has to be the same volume that's moved upward on the right-hand side, right? So that, that was this part right here. So those are the three steps. Manometer at the beginning, manometer after the deflection, and then equating the volume of the displacements. So that's how we got to this point. Now the last bit of the problem is to find the sensitivity. The sensitivity in the problem statement is defined as the change in the height on the right-hand side with respect to the change in uh, the little bit of pressure. Well, that we can find pretty easily because that's just taking the derivative of this expression with respect to delta P here. So this would just be 1 over A2, A2 over A1 plus 1 times 1 over density of water times gravity. So that's the, that's the sensitivity. Okay, And obviously, we want the sensitivity to be large. So for S to be large, what we'd want to do is we'd want A2 over A1 to be as small as possible. That'll give us more sensitivity, right? If A2 over A1 is small, then the denominator here is small, smaller, and so then that makes S larger. Uh, the only other thing that we could really do practically is use a different fluid other than water. Um, so let me make a note of that as well. Use a fluid other than water where the density of the fluid is less than the density of the water. So if we, if we had a smaller density here, then the sensitivity would be larger. The other thing you could do is if you could somehow control gravity, if you could make gravity smaller, then you'd get a larger sensitivity, but that's not really practical. If you can change the gravity, um, then you don't need to worry about fluid mechanics problems. You'll, you'll uh, be in good shape for doing pretty much anything else that you want. Um, Anyway, obviously that's not practical, so we'll ignore um, modifying gravity.
Okay, so that's it for this example. We'll go ahead and end it there.